Well, hello everyone. Thank you for showing up to the OpenE webinar. Today's webinar is going to be based on performance testing with the OpenE DSS v6 uh, for your NICs and for your volumes. So what we're going to cover today is setting up the NICs for both the DSS v6 systems and how that will work and then install the small updates for the NICs to do the test. Uh, as you'll see this file is called upd underscore 0574 dash dss underscore v6 dot udp. Sorry for the long name, but we do organize these because we do have many of them. And then what we'll do is we'll test the NICs from the console tools, and there's a section in there called add-ons. And in that section, we'll show the NIC performances. And then after that, we're going to go into setting up the volumes to be used with the DSS v6, uh, what to do for the test for the read writes, and then install the volume test small update, which will be the UPD 0524-DSS underscore v6.upd. And then what we'll do is perform a read and write test from the console tools, and it's in the same section uh, as uh, the NIC test is. Today is May 17, um, the 2011, and my name is Todd Maxwell, and along with me is Chris Wilson. What I want to do is uh, go over the sections of it and be able to show you the volume speed test and how to perform this. Basically, I, I wanted to put just a comment for each of these uh, so it's recorded for everyone. And by the way, what I'll do is that near the end, I can send you these small updates on the file transfer of the NetViewer session. You're welcome to download them or just email me, and I'll be able to supply you with a small update. But what I really want to basically go over is that the small updates must be installed in the, in the software GUI, in the software update and maintenance. So I'll go over that briefly, but I just want to show everybody how to access this and to set it up. And then once you're done uh, installing it, rebooting the system, what you want to do is you want to go into the console screen, and there you want to enter Control-Alt-T, and that is the console tools. Uh, there you'll see the add-ons uh, functionality to perform the array-to-array -array test uh, for the read-write and also for the network interface network speed test. And what I first want to show you is I have three DSS systems. DSS1 is where we're going to perform the read-write uh, test for the array-to-array. -array. Uh, then we're going to have DSS2 and DSS3 for the NIC speed test. So let's go back over to DSS-1. The What I'm using, by the way, everybody, is the new latest version, in case any of you don't know, that the latest version it came out last week, which is build 5377. And I'm using this one for the read-write test. Now remember, we talked about in the beginning that there is a small update. Um, what you want to do when you receive the small update is you want to go to Maintenance, Software Update. And here is where you'll find the area to do the software update. You want to go to Browse, and you want to be able to select for 524 for the RAID array test. Now, I've already have it installed, but it's one for everybody's knowledge base, just to be able to know that you want to update that small file, and then click on Upload. And once it's completed on uploading, then you need to restart the system. Once the system is restarted, you can verify by clicking uh, to verify that the small update did take uh, after rebooting the system. Is what you do is you come in here and you click the, the up arrow, or it'll be down at that point. Here you can see all the release notes information for the version that you currently are running. If we scroll all the way down, you'll see here it is, Disk Performance Test Under Console. Um, when you need to uninstall it, all you have to do is click on the X, reboot the DSSV6 system. Now, if you want to run both the NIC speed test and the disk performance test, only one can be added. You cannot add both of them and perform them. So please be aware that if you, after you're done doing your disk performance test and you want to perform your network interface controller test, Please remove this, restart the system, and or add the small update, remove that, and restart the system. And that'll save you two reboots. All right, so now we've completed and we added the small update. Let me show you what I've got on my volumes. What I did is I created three uh, volumes for from my arrays. 
I have a 260 uh, gig volume here that is on unit S00. Now that is on a 3 wear 9690 and I'm using all SAS drives. The unit S01 is using one terabyte SATA drives. And of course these are older drives. And what I'm showing is a variance of difference of performance values that you'll see. The, uh, by the way, the S00 is a RAID 5. The one terabyte, the two one terabyte drives in a RAID 0. And of course I have uh, these two older drives that are in a RAID 0, and they're SATA as well. So if we take a look, I have in my, if I go set up hardware, RAID, I've, here I've shown you that I have three RAID, two RAID controllers, a three-way RAID controller, and an LSI RAID controller. So for the LSI, I've basically created in my disk configuration, I set my write back values, uh, my read policies, my access policies, cache policies, and my disk policies as where they are right now. Now you can change these values to test your read performance and write tests as well on the fly with the LSI RAID controller. So here you can see I have uh, my drives in RAID 0 configuration. Now let's take a look at the three-ware. So if we go to administrator, let's load up the three-ware. And while that's loading up, I do want to make a note that you really don't want to perform the write test with the um, with with the volume already formatted. So you want to keep them unformatted. So if we look at the three-ware array controller, again I'm using the 9690SA version. Here are my SAS drives. And that's my 260 gig, which was the, or is the S000 unit in my 1.8 terabyte, which is my SATA drives at the 1 terabyte drives. Okay, so now let's go back to DSSV6 and go to configuration and in volume groups. Now remember, these are available. If you have already have a volume created and it's already formatted, you can only do the read test. You cannot perform a write test. So bear that in mind when you, before you ship a system out or before you start testing, it's a good idea to um, make sure for all your write tests to not format them. What that would mean is basically if you were to click on one of these and then hit apply, uh, this would then format the volume, and then, of course, you're not going to be able to perform the write test. So leave them empty, leave them available to be able to perform your write test. All right, after this is set up and you have your arrays completed, what you want to do at this point is you, want, you can walk up to the system and do it, or you can set up a putty uh, and do an SSH. What I've done is I go to Setup Administrator, right in Setup Administrator, then I scroll down to the bottom here, and here you'll have remote console access. Uh, you can set up your password, which needs to be five characters, and of course I'm taking the default port of 22,222. If you ever need putty, just click on the question mark right here, scroll all the way down, and if you click on putty, you can be able to download putty uh, for, uh, if you click right here on download, and then go ahead and uh, install putty. Now, I've already set up the putty session, so we don't have to go too much into this and go right into the performance test. So here I have putty open for this system right here. Let's close everything out so it makes it clear. There we go. Uh, here is the DSS1 server that we're working with. And remember, we want to go into Control-Alt-T. So let's go ahead and Control-Alt-T. Here we have the options all the way down to option number six, which is the add-ons that we talked about. Now we want to select option one, which is called the disk test. So what we want to do is perform a read test, and let's just do this do only two of them because I think you'll get the idea of what's going on here. Um, we're going to do the read test for S000, which is the SAS drives on the RAID 5 configuration. So it's going to go ahead and run it, and it's going to give you really an immediate result. Uh, if you ever wanted to copy this so that we could send it to your customers or keep it on a record, you can always right-click on the putty and select Copy All to Clipboard. And if you notice, then you can take your notepad at this time, and of course, 
you can add these values in and store them. So if we look, you can save this for your records. So here you see my read results are 457 megabytes. Now let's do a write test. And again, this is on the SAS drives with a RAID 5 configuration. Keep in mind, you it's probably a good idea to make sure firmware is updated on the controller. Um, if there's firmware for the drives, for their recommended uh, manufacturing specs to update if there's an issue, um, perform your firmware updates on the hard drives, especially when you're doing tests, especially when you're doing a new system in a rollout. Now the write test takes a little bit longer, but as we see, we're going to select the S00. And at this point, it brings you up an attention that uh, we're doing a write benchmarks on the unit S000, and that all data could and will be lost if you wish to continue. So please be aware of that. And here we have our write speed test. So the max speed we have is now 382. Now tuning this and enabling the, the write cache on the controller, whatever controller you have, whether it be an Adaptic or an LSI, a Rika, uh, three where um, you might want to play with your performance values. Now let's take a look at the write test, I mean the read and write test for the SATA. And let's go to which is S001. And that's with our one terabyte drives. Now this is with the three where 9690 that we have and we have the RAID 0. Now notice the difference. So obviously you can see the performance values of a, a SAS drives were significantly higher, and that was with a RAID 5. Uh, here you're seeing it with a RAID 0 uh, with SATA 1 terabyte drives. So before we had 382, here we're seeing the uh, value of 100. So it's a significant drop with SATA, even on a RAID 0. Now let's take a look at what a write test is on the RAID 0 with our 1 terabyte drives. And of course we get the same message. Another significant drop. So you might want to look into, um, again, SAS is performing faster, especially with databases. You want to look at that, um, or if you have a lot of high-O demands. Now, then I take regular disks, very inexpensive SATA disks, um, which we'll do a write test and a read test with, which will be S002. Now, this is using the LSI RAID controller. I have it fully tuned. Um, all the firmware is up to date. And again, the, the performance is not that great concern, compared to the SAS. Now let's take a look at the write test. And again, this is just using RAID 0 on the LSI RAID controller. Select this is 002. And it just performs a little bit slower. So it's a good idea to run your test, to test your performances uh, against different RAID values, your setup of your cache values on the controller. Let's bring back up VSS V6. So again, you, you can play around with the values of even on freeware or performance, but make sure that if you're using a right cache uh, value that you do have some battery backup unit attached. Uh, I do not have one on this system, but when you do set for performance, uh, especially with right cache, make sure that you do have a battery backup unit. With the LSI, you can uh, talk to their engineers. You can change these values on the on the fly and apply them and then be able to run your tests again. So this helps you uh, in evaluating different RAID arrays, different RAID configuration with your write policies, your read policies, your access policies, and all the way down to your disk cache policies. So you can always change these values and run your tests. So again, if I wanted to perform a NIC test now, what I would have to do is go to maintenance, software update, scroll down to the bottom, remove it, 
And then you'll see this message, small update has been deleted successfully. Please reboot the system. At this point in time, I can go ahead and add my NIC test, my small update, hit apply. It only takes a second. And it's an added TCP network test under console tools add-on. So here we can just set, accept the uh, apply button. And then at this point, what we want to do is go to maintenance, shutdown, and then click on restart. Now, why that's restarting? Let's go ahead and shift gears and go to our DSS2 system and DSS3. Now, DSS2 is the Intel uh, storage server, which is the SSR2612 uh, version. And I have uh, the 1 gig Enix as well as a 10 gig Enix. The DSS3 is a very inexpensive system. I just, it's basically a white box I just put together with a, a gigabyte, uh, yeah, gigabyte uh, motherboard that has the built in four NICs. And then I've added the 10 giggy from Intel, which is the uh, X520 version. Uh, what you'll see in the Intel Corporation will be labeled as the 8259EB 10 gigabit. SFI, SFP network uh, card that I have in there. So I'm using a fiber uh, optic to connect it instead of copper. The ETH0 and ETH1 will be testing, and ETH4 is the 10 gig e, which will we be testing. Now I've set the DSS3 as slave mode, and you'll see why. And DSS2 is the Intel server. And here let's look at the networks. We're going to be testing with ETH0 and ETH1. And of course, ETH12 is our 10 giggy uh, Intel NIC that we're going to be using. Once again, I need to go to maintenance, software update, and make sure that I've installed the small update that you see here that states the added TCP network test under console tools. All right. So we've already added it. Let's go into our console screen and let's begin on setting it up. So once I've added the uh, small update, let's close out this window. Close this one out. And we're dealing with the IP address of the DSS1, which is, if you look here in the top left, or right here on the screen, we see 221. So I'm going to make that my master. So what we want to do is do Control Alt T. And once again, we want to go to option number six, which is the add-ons. And here you'll see that it states the TCPI net, uh, network test. And I have the option to set it as master or slave. Now for this, I'm going to set the Intel server, which will be master. And we want to set that up. So you want to be able to click the OK button. And now let's bring up the DSS3. And this is on dot .222. So again, we're going to go to Control-Alt, select add-ons, and we'll go to TCP network test. Now here I'm going to select it as slave mode. And it's already active. So now let's go back to our master. So let's first start testing the 1 gig e. Now what we're going to do is on 1 gig e, we have the IP address. It's going to the slave, which is DSS3. So let's enter that in. It's going to be 192.168.0.222. So this will go all the way up to its percent of 100% of test. Now, what do we see? Well, it looks like we have an issue. So I wanted to show you this, that the sometimes you may think that you have server-grade NICs, um, and it could be a performance issue, or are there bad packets? So let's take a look at if we were to look at another NIC that I used that I've inserted on the one gigabit uh, motherboard. It's a very low-end motherboard. 
It's more of a desktop motherboard. It's not really server grade. And let's look at those values. So we're going to use a different IP address on the other motherboard. So let's do it again. We're going to select master. Now, 222 is our DSS-3, which is our low-end uh, system. So it's still going to be the 1 gig. Big difference. So before, we saw values that were below half. And if we look here, I record them. So you could tell that there's an issue that we have versus something that's a little bit more consistent. So this helps you identify, do I have a cable problem? Uh, could it be just a port? Maybe something got throttled down. Uh, I've seen in some cases where in some network environments, the switch has been forced to be 100 megabits instead of 1 gig E. So bear that in mind when you do a test that this is very important to evaluate the best performance you're getting. So if we look at going back into uh, this test, we can look at if, let's say, uh, I wanted to test where the problem could be or verify. So let's run it one more time, and let's try to troubleshoot it real quick. So would it be 192.168.0.2.2.2? Remember, this is our poor performing NIC. So I purposely put this in here to show everybody that you could run into a problem. How would you diagnose it? Where would you go at? So you see the values, again, are just, they're terrible. They're half. Uh, what do we do? Well, let's just go back and take a look at it. If I wanted to troubleshoot the NIC, where would I begin? Obviously, you would start off with the cable. But before we do that, let's verify here in the console, because we can do a lot of work here. If you do Control-Alt-N, and by the way, if you ever have difficulties understanding what keys or what, or the Alt keys for the DSS console screen, all you do is you hit F1. And you'll have a whole listing that comes up and shows the uh, whole values. So for example... Let's go back. I'm going to go. I'm going to bypass that for right now because I'm doing multiple things on the other end. But let's just do Control Alt N. So it'll be Control Alt N for network. So if you go into your network settings, now we were using the master on dot two two one. Here we get your information. Uh, the active just means that it's on DHCP, which is off. And also, if you look at the IP address, we know what we're addressing with. So what I want to do is arrow over to info. Ah, and look what we have. So if you see here, I have 173 errors. So there's a problem. And that tells me that I may have uh, either a port issue on this network interface, or could it be on the server on the other side? Well, let's take a, let's take a look at that. Right now we're on the master, and let's bring down the master and go into now the slave that we set up. There's also a question that says, do we have to have two OpenE uh, SANs to test the network connection? Yes, you do, because of the associated small update that uh, you'll be supplying for each of the uh, DSS V6s. So if we go into the DSS-3, which was the lower end motherboard, and we select the ETH1, uh, ETH0 that we have, here I have no errors. So I'm not receiving any errors or drop packets uh, on this NIC interface. I'm, I'm still looking at a speed of 1,000 megabits, and it's full duplex, and it looks like I'm okay. So from my assumption, I would say that I have a problem either from this port or from the switch because I'm on the RX receiving packets and I'm getting errors. So here we can see that uh, I have issues. Now let's take a look at the 10 gig E. 
So let's go back out of this. And what I'll do is I'll just hit escape. And the 10 gig E is going to be the NIC3, uh, E12, sorry, which is the 3.221 right here in this value. So let's take a look at it. Let's verify the info on that. So I have no errors, uh, no packet errors. It's running right now. Speed is 10,000. So we'll go ahead and test it. So we'll hit escape and we want to go back into control alt T. All right, so let's go select option number six. TCP network test. We're going to still keep it as a uh, sender, which will be the master. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, stay on the net, uh, third octet, which is the dot three on their network. 192.168.3. Dot, of course, 222 is our slave. And let's see if we, we know that we didn't have any receive errors, but we'll verify once more. Those numbers look good. So here you can see that the values that we have uh, are fine, and that those are the uh, real speeds that we should be receiving on a 10 gig E. So let's verify if there's any packet errors, uh, maybe that we're dealing with a motherboard issue. But uh, usually when we get receive errors, um, it's from the outside. We're not transmitting out. So let's verify on our 10 gig E. We'll just hit escape and do control alt N. And select E12, which is the 3.221. Let's go to info. And I have no errors at all. So I would deduce that we probably have either a cable problem, uh, maybe there's a switch problem, and of course at that point you probably either want to swap out or go to a different uh, NIC port. And I also think I've got the other server up now, so let's verify on DSS1 that we brought up. So let's reload the page. And let's test the add-on tools. So let's go ahead and log on to the uh, putty session that we have and restart it. By the way, to get in access to putty, you just type CLI, which is for command line interface. It's a default user uh, name to get into the remote console access of the DSS v6. And I just put a short password of 12345, and we are up. So I can actually test this system now. So let's do control alt n and let's verify we're going to test with 0 0.220 which is E0 and see if we have any packet errors. None. So let's go ahead and verify our test. So on this DSS1 we're going to make it a slave. And what we want to do is uh, use the cursor keys down and then hit the space bar and then state OK. Now let's go back to our master and let's escape from here. And go to Control Alt T again. Add ons and go to option number one. Set it for sender. We'll do the IP address for the one gig E on the Intel to Intel server. So 192.168.0.220 is our slave that we will be sending to. So this tells us that we do have an issue with that NIC and that we can verify. Let's try another test on another NIC. 
Again, the performance was a little better, but not as much. So we know we have a NIC problem or a cable problem or basically the spoiler switch on the port. So let's run one more test. We'll keep it as master. And this time we'll go 192.168.1. .220. Ah, so it tells us it's it's definitely that neck and that problem. So that, I hope that helps you out that you can identify where the problem's at because we use the NIC, uh, the second NIC on DSS2, uh, which was on a different network. So now we know that we have an issue with that uh, ETH0. And of course, we tested with ETH1 on the master to ETH1 on the slave from Intel to Intel. So I hope that everybody understands it and that might help you to diagnose on your, your performance tests uh, for your volumes and also for your NICs before you deploy a system in a new environment. And it also will help you troubleshoot if you are in an environment what's happening with maybe some connect, connection issues if there's drop packets or if you're not performing as best as you should with either a 1 giggy or a 10 giggy. That pretty much wraps up our webinar, and I really want to appreciate everybody coming. Uh, and I want to let everybody know that during the um, webinars, we will be always planning more and more sessions. You can always view them. In fact, I might want to show that where you can always see them, because a lot of people want to know what are the next sessions of the webinars and how they are planned. If we go to the opening website, where I want to take you is if you look at the... Um, if you go to libraries, webcast, and videos, all of them will be recorded, including this one. And here you'll see just a lot of information here of everything you can possibly think of. And, of course, we have a long list. We're going to probably recategorize these and associate them with the how-to resources, which is another good area to help you look for information about replications, backups, snapshots. And, of course, there's one down here called Others, which is really good. It talks about MPIO. So if you're really looking for some real quality speeds with some one gig E and you're looking for a high IO, MPIO is something you might want to look into. And of course, all our webinars are always uh, recorded and also scheduled if you go to news, webinars, and here you'll see the next schedules of uh, the features that we're going to be presenting. Looks like we got a question, uh, one last question here. It's uh, which uh, looks like what OS should I select to create VMware uh, DSS SAN? So I guess are you trying to create a DSS uh, OS as a virtual machine? Uh, let me know and I'll answer your question. Yeah, I, typically what I use select on a DSS as a virtual machine just as a Linux OS 64-bit uh, mode. Uh, you could try also Red Hat uh, and if there's a Debian option. I know that in Zen there is, and if there is a Zen, uh, we got a new update that you might want to ask us about if you're installing DSS uh, v6 as a virtual machine.